uh, Drexel, Drexel and Felicia from ATL. Okay, we got two people in, in one place. That's what's up. All right, so uh, about another 30 seconds here. Let me grab a something to drink really quickly so you guys don't hear the scratchy throat AJ going on. You might have my grandma. Okay. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. Let me. Um... Okay, guys, we are coming uh, live from the office of Ask April Love, uh, Live in Living Color. And we're excited. Tonight is preview number two. Yay! Of a brand new U course. So here's what I'm going to do, April. I'm going to switch over to you so that you are the presenter. Do you have the, the um, screen up yet? Let's see. Guys, let me know if you can see um, April's screen. You should be able to see the presentation. Let's see how. Mm -hmm. Give me a second here. Okay, let's see. Let's see here. Do this. And, well, that's fine. All right. Yes, we can see it. All right, April. Um, can you see it? If you can see April's screen, type April screen. Because I see a whole lot of yeses from the last few questions. Yes, I can see it. All right. So, again, uh, my name is AJ, and I am the facilitator uh, for this evening's training. And I'm really excited. Um, again, for those of you who are new, if this is your first time on, uh, type first time in the chat window just so we know who we're working with. And also, type um, the business that you are in, the, the industry and the business. And if you have a name for your business, type you know the name of your business and, and your service that you provide. We just want to get a good snapshot uh, for who's all on the call. So we have Kamai in the legal field. Again, we are working on building brands tonight, so we want a snapshot of everybody that's on first time in chat room. Events, certified wedding event coordinator. Epiphany Salon Husband and Wife Wellness Center. Cool. Photography, music. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, also, guys, um, and I'll get to that in just a minute, but if you would, go take a picture of the screen right now. Uh, um, we're going to do the the cover. Oh, Dainty Cheek for Home Luxury Perfume. Lisa's joining us tonight. For too. film. Is she? Okay, yeah. she did. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. PR with Vicky P. In the, in the artist PR. Vicky, Vicky Port, Portser, Porter. Uh, Vonda, uh, let's see, exclusive apparel, men and women's clothing. Wow, we have so we have a variety of, of okay. different businesses, businesses, and different industries. So that's exciting. So again, guys, go ahead and get your notebook out. Last week, um, I left here after the training, totally mind blown. And I think even though uh, April and I have worked closely together putting the training together for you guys, she she kind of went down a path last week, and she added so much value to the training that, you know, I left with my head spinning, and I, as I was doing the edits after the show, uh, I went home, I went and listened to it again. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so again, I know, you know, if this is your first time on, prepare to get your mind blown. If this is your second time on, prepare to get your mind blown again. And for those who are on the second time, uh, we want you to really focus on helping us share the information. So take pictures of every single screen. Um, and let me go ahead and, and go through this. April, would you go ahead and forward to the next slide? Absolutely. All right, so again, my name is AJ. Uh, I am the co-host and the producer. Um, our hashtag tonight, and go ahead and take a picture of this screen as well. Our hashtag for tonight is hashtag a brand new you. Hashtag a brand new you. So go ahead on Instagram. That's where I will be following the questions. Um, and, and again, if you want to post on Facebook, um, in, you know, Twitter, whatever, just, just help us spread the word. But I will be following people back, and I will be taking questions from Instagram, okay? Um, and uh, if you're not, go ahead and follow April at Ask April Love. Um, and if you're not following me, I am AJ Joiner um, with an I, as you can see on the screen. Um, okay. All right. All right. So um, we're getting ready to. I'm getting ready to give you guys the lady of the hour. So today or tonight, rather tonight. Um, first, April's going to share a little background information on who she is. Uh, her background, how she got started, some of the pe people that she worked with, um, some of the decisions that she made early in life that influenced her direction. Uh, she's going to share all of that with you guys. And then she's going to give you guys uh, lessons, right? So, again, this is just one of the lessons, though. So who's perfect uh, for personal brand success, right? So, again, if you're building a brand, if you're building a business, 
you want your brand to be number one representative of, of the message that you're trying to portray and number two representative of who you are right so she's gonna share a lot of that information tonight and then you know later in the training she's she has she has assembled a, a mega super all-star uh, um, ultimate I don't I don't even have the adjective to describe but she's put together a great panel and uh, they're really excited I think we may actually have a surprise guest on for you guys tonight but yes we do <laughs> so there you, and there you have it it's confirmed so again um, I'm AJ Joyner take pictures of the screen I am gonna take questions live so you guys should see the little hand over to the right and if you click on the hand button it'll raise your hand all right so let's do that real quick before I give you over to April I want to Someone to raise their hand. I just want to test the microphones and make sure I can see the hands and I can uh, open you guys up for questions. So go ahead and click the question or the hand. So let's see. I have Amar Amaris. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, I'm going to yes. unmute your microphone. Hey, Amaris Mock, can you hear me? Uh oh, looks like you're muted on your side. So there's a microphone button on your side. If you would click that, there you go. I unmuted. Hey, Amaris, it. Can, you can you hear me? me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we are, first of all, thank you for, for joining us tonight. Thank you. <laughs> all right. And uh, where are you calling in from? I am in Atlanta, Georgia as well. You're in, you're in the ATL? Yes. Okay. Um, so what is one thing that you're looking forward to learning tonight? Um, how to build a brand all together. So I don't personally have my own brand yet, but I do. Um, I am looking forward to building one. Got it. Um, do you have an idea of the industry that you're going to serve or the value that you're going to provide? Um, somewhere around event planning. Event planning. Perfect. All right. Well, uh -huh. again, thank you so much, Amaris, for joining us. I just wanted to do a microphone check. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, thank you again, Amaris. I am going to bring up the lady of the hour. And before I do that, I want you to go ahead and type yes, yay, uh, hip, hip, hooray in the chat window. We want to give a warm virtual round of applause from everybody to, let's see if I can, maybe I can, I would love to hear that. Oh. Can we make that happen? Can I make it? Can I make it? Can, can we make it that happen? Oh, we to do it. Okay. okay. I was going to unmute everybody's microphone just for a cheer. But we're going to put our virtual hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for the one and only uh, Miss April Love. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Thank you, AJ. And I'm cheering for all of you because it means a lot um, to your brand and to how much you feel um, that you deserve. You're investing yourself by taking this time out of your evening where you could be doing catching up on your shows, you could be doing some work, you could be getting some extra sleep, you could be doing a lot of things, but you decided to join us. And we do not take that for granted. I'm very, very grateful to have you on tonight. So we want to give you some amazing things to lead with. So, again, I'm April Love, so let's get into this. All right. So, who is April? Um, April is a little bit of Southern Charm and Northern Hustle. I spent the formative years of my life between the New York Tri-State area and New Jersey area and um, settling with my family in Macon, Georgia. And so, I have that that southern hospitality that, that I really embrace um, that allows me to really connect with people and I see that popping up a lot of time in my field um, in public relations so I guess you would say something I coined I'm a Yankee Peach. Alright, the entrepreneurial bug. Um, I can say that probably since I was able to understand people working for themselves I, I knew I was that person. Even though I followed the typical tract that most people follow, you know, going to school and um, having corporate jobs and whatnot, but it did, um, it was something that was embedded in me early on. If you guys are ever familiar, see, yes, candy. Let me tell you what that means. Um, I think everybody's familiar with the candy lady, right? But I'm like the new edition candy girl, you know. Um, when I was in middle school, um, I had an opportunity to understand what that kind of um, entrepreneur kind of thing was, I, I I guess it's a good thing and it's a bad thing because really I was not completely clear to do this in my school, but I had my family and cahoots, my mom, you know, my aunts, and they would take me to, I guess what would be equivalent to like a BJ's Wholesale or a Costco. I saw a need. We were in a school that didn't have um, concessions or what do you call the vending machine. So we were like, you know, they would sneak off 
you know, people, I would see kids, you know, sneaking some candy. It wasn't necessarily a candy-friendly environment, so I saw a need. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, that's what you do. You seek to meet a need. So I saw the need for candy in my school. And um, convincing, you know, my family members that it was not going to be something that, you know, that would be a problem, I said, look, this is an opportunity for me to generate my own money. You know, I took money from my birthday. With my, that was my first initial investment. I collected all the money from my birthday. And I think it was my 11th birthday, as a matter of fact. And I went to this place, and I initially saw that I needed diversity in my inventory. So I picked up some Kit Kats and some Nihilators, and I had a variety. So initially, I started on this venture on my own. But it became something that was something that was a little bit more than I could handle on my own. So I enlisted people in each grade. Back then, and I don't know, some schools are still the same way. It was fifth, sixth, and seventh grade in one school. So I enlisted people on each hall. There was a fifth grade hall. There was a sixth grade hall. There was a seventh grade hall. And then I had to weed out the riffraff. You had people that were stealing and eating the inventory. You had people that were coming back with the same amount of candy you gave them in the beginning. So I had numbers. I would put in my notebook. And I would really take this business serious. Until, you know, one fateful day, you know, they caught wind of what I was doing. I had candy all over the school. So um, I guess that was my first kind of law and order experience <laughs> because uh, the teacher, it was my gym teacher that was the actual initial snitch, you know, because there were Kit Kats all over, you know, gym class. So I was like, okay, you know, um, I was called into the principal's office, but mind you, this was, I wasn't busted until after the holidays. So this was a business that I worked well into the spring. I, I basically had a goal. You know, I wanted a bike, and I wanted to invest in my own bike because I wanted a certain kind of bike. So um, I say all that to say that even though I was busted in my initial, and they said you can't bring candy back into the school, and my mom was called up there, and, and so my parents were like, this venture is over because it can't be to the detriment of your student record. I still, the bug, I was bit at that point because I could dictate the volume of business and the amount of money I can make. So I was an entrepreneur. I just didn't know what that word was at the time. Okay. Moving right on, I think the reason that my family was even open to the ventures because they've always been that. They've been working class individuals, you know, I have nurses and doctors and 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 things that just, you know, the the typical careers in my family. But they always had side hustles. My uncle and my cousins, like he had his kids doing landscaping. So even though he worked in the school system as well as my mom, you know, she she became something that she was like, I, I, I tell people that my mom was like my first eBay. She had stuff all over the house. She um, and my aunt and my godmom, they became like um, what you would call antique dealers. So that means they skimmed all over the obituaries and they found out about estate sales. And a lot of times, you know, very well-off families have children that come back in town and basically just want to sell everything. So they would go and they would get these trucks and they would pick up everything and they would just pay one lump sum and then they would find buyers. And then to, they got to the point they had so much inventory that they opened up at this kind of antique mall kind of space and they had these, you know, vintage pieces and they had very select furniture and, and all these finds and we started understanding like, you know, a lot of depression. I, I was like I was like 12 years old trying to find out value for like depression glass and things like that. And it was worth so much. They would buy something like 15 cents and sell it for like $300. So it was between that and what I was able to see with what she was doing, she was generating more money in on the weekend doing this than she was with her quote-unquote good job in the school system. So I said, you know what, I... And all that was embedded in me early, you know. So over my formative years, I kind of just put it in and, you know, went through the course of, you know, the typical route. But I knew eventually that I would be dictating my own, quote, unquote, glass ceiling that I would break through early. Okay, so now, fast forward. So now I'm a teenager. <laughs> but I'm not quite old enough to have a job because I don't have a car or anything like that. But, um... I think everybody remembers their first teen parties, you know, the ones that, like, um, these regular adult clubs would turn the clubs into, like, um, teen parties on the weekends or, or whatnot. So I became um, a frequent attendee of one in particular at a skating rink where I'm from. And me and my friends were, like, very 
I, I guess I was an influencer early on as well because, you know, we would talk to people, guys, girls, and and they would be on different schools across town and we'd say, you know, meet us at this particular um, skating rink. And we started real, realizing what kind of leverage we had, but so did the promoters. One of the owners as well as the promoter of those particular nights started kind of incentivizing us by saying, you know, um, you girls can, you know, they give us free unlimited pizza and all kind of things at the concessions and I... I saw value. I said, wait a minute. So we're getting like 30 to 35 of our friends to come on any given night, and you're charging, and we're getting like pizza. I'm cool on the pizza. What is the revenue share? <laughs> yeah, you know. I was like, I see what you're doing. I pizza it early. You know, it's just like, let's make uh, a deal. So surprisingly enough, he, I mean, he was open to it. You know, he didn't expect this kid to, you know, have that kind of wherewithal and kind of insight. So I told my girlfriends, you know, let's even go harder. Let's, you know, kind of come up with our own little name for what we're doing. And we became, that was my first time, my segue into promoting. I've been doing parties ever since, you know, but that was my first experience at doing it and monetizing it. So between candy and events, I realized, you know, it's money out here to be made. But you got to find out what your skills are. What are you good at, you know? And I feel like that is where I realized my value was in, like, enlisting people to move my mission, you know? All right, so now let's fast forward. Um, I finished school and um, I attend. Um, I attended Florida A&M University, Florida A&M in Tallahassee, and um, you know what? That was probably one of the most monumental moments in my life because I really um, was able to embrace culture. I saw like you know kids from all over, from Washington D.C., from Los Angeles. And I mean, the only thing that was, you know, differentiating us from each other was the fact that we had different accents. But we we're all ambitious. We all had dreams. We all had goals. We all had family supporting us. And it was like a global thing. You know, you had the kids from, you know, Miami and from Florida. They had, you know, the locks or the, you know, remnants of the Jerry Curls. <laughs> you had the the kids from Chicago, and and you saw like the house music and and the influences from all over the country. And I realized that I would never be a person that would have a lot of grass collect around my feet. And I credit FAMU with that. I've been a global traveler ever since because I felt like there's a world out there for me to see, and I am destined and determined to see it. Um, studying there kind of, you know, set me up for that kind of um, that kind of life, the life I've set myself up for, you know, all along. Um, I found myself um, after FAMU, I was I interned um, in Atlanta. A couple times, actually, because I'm an advocate. You know, if anybody asks me, you know, I'm a firm believer in working pro bono and getting all the experience as well as interning because that kind of experience is invaluable. It can put you in the company of so many people that you can learn and glean so much knowledge from. And, um, I mean, who's not open to free work, <laughs> free labor? So, you know, I, I, w I couldn't imagine somebody going through a four-year academic career and not interning. So interning brought me to Atlanta, and I was like, whoa, you know, I'd come to Atlanta, but I'd never come in to Atlanta in the capacity that I saw it when I came, you know, in the 90s. And I'd always been drawn to entertainment, even though I was studying marketing, and I had um, actually initially, before I even went to, um, enrolled in school, I, I initially saw myself doing corporate, you know, law. I'd always been that person to watch Law and Order. I'd always been that person to watch the criminal shows. And even when I was little, I'd read this book called Encyclopedia Brown, and I was always solving the cases. So that was always intriguing to me. And that's what I said. That's that's what I'll get into on Saturday as well. When you look at those things that trigger you, those things that motivate you and kind of excite you, they're kind of attached to your passion and your purpose. But um, once I got to Atlanta, you know, I set another goal. Even though I ended up eventually going off to New York, and working and getting landing a job there. I knew for whatever reason I was drawn to Atlanta and I was drawn to the music culture. And I put it on the list even before I knew what um, a vision board was. I said, hey, I know that I need to be working with Jermaine Dupree, L.A. Reid, or Dallas Austin. Now I didn't know how that was going to manifest itself, but I knew that's what it was. That's what was going to happen. So eventually, I did have the opportunity to um, work with all of those companies, but I was primarily working on the production side with Dallas Austin. Yes. Can I stop right there? Sure. Um, guys, I, I just wanted to kind of bring that to your attention. April is, is she's just kind of spewing out all this, this good information. 
But that right there, that's a I think that's a teachable moment, okay. right? Because you knew what you wanted, mm -hmm. you, you saw it in your head, mm -hmm. and then you wrote it down. Absolutely. And then you started to figure out how it was going to happen. Absolutely. Guys, I want you to really like write this word down. And I don't know if you have to put it in your phone. I don't know if you need to put it on a post-it note. But this is one of the most powerful words in um, all of humanity. <laughs> it's called intention. You have to be intentional with your life. You have to know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm going to set out to reach all my goals. You know what I'm saying? I did not know, and I'm telling you, but by any means necessary, I start speaking in a, in a language like when I. It's never like am I going to or I wonder if I can or I wish I knew this person. All I say was, you know, when I meet Jermaine or when I connect with Dallas or when I am working on the face. I didn't know which one was going to happen, but I've always thought like that. So that was definitely the first time that I saw that come full circle. And it was the weirdest thing because um, I found myself back in Atlanta um, taking courses at Georgia State and ended up meeting, I mean, it's like it was a hotbed in Atlanta. I mean, Puffy was coming down here just wreaking havoc. Um, he was trying to make his mark in the industry. I was always one to keep, um, like I said, stay abreast of what's going on in entertainment. So I was attending conferences like Jack the Rapper and Impact. So I knew all these you know, players were, but I ended up, um, it wasn't an intern because I was actually paid to work for um, Rowdy. They had, you know, done a deal with Arista Records, and um, I, I never forget because I had three jobs at one time. I was bartending, you know, I was going, taking jobs. a class at Georgia State. I was, you know, and it, it was like, Arista was right on Marietta Street downtown. And I was running over there after, and it was like around the clock, you know, taking these classes, doing this, you know. And I really bonded with Dallas' brother, Claude, um, who has since passed, but was a very monumental um, influence in my life, as well as Dave Gates, who to this day is still a mentor to me. And he was, they were respectively president and general manager of Rowdy. So they saw something in me, and they really took me on their wing, and they introduced me to so many different aspects of the industry that, um, I mean, were just invaluable. I understood the production and the publishing and A and R and A and R administration, and and you know, it was just a, a a crazy moment. It was just like I was able to actually just um, learn so much in that short period of time that's gone on to create so many segues for me to move about in the industry. Um, Okay, let's talk about noontime because um, after working with um, Dallas, I mean, that company actually um, ended up, they were, he was back, he ended up back in New York, and I was able to connect with some, the next set of players who actually were um, some young guys that were from Howard University and from California, and they were signing all these amazing producers. Um, I remember the first person I actually connected with was a um, producer. He's going on to be a Grammy Award winning multi platinum producer, Brian Michael Cox. But he was like, you know, interning. We were kind of like coming up in the industry together. You know, he was a student at Clark, and I was taking these classes at Georgia State. And, you know, we were just, you know, very connected. And to this day, we still are, but it was, yes. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just got excited. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, signing Jazzy Faye and um, signing so many different um, artists that, um, and we were working with everybody, you know. It was like production was like king at the time, and I was just in the midst of it from the bad boy hitman to my relationships I had with all the dark producers, the Dallas producers, to the the new relationships. Being the only female at Noontime at the time, it was just like I didn't even realize what a major period. You know, sometimes hindsight is twenty twenty, but it was amazing. That was an amazing time in the music industry. Um, I'll tap. I'll tap on this a little bit. I spoke about it last Tuesday, um, and I've I've done this over the years. This is something where I said people, you know, um, I've always I always post this, and it's the same, you know, social media meme, and it says that the, the average millionaire has um, seven streams of income, you know. So I'm kind of like floored when sometimes people put their eggs in one basket. So even when I was working in New York, and even when I was working for Noontime, I was always writing. 
I was one of the first people to write about the Atlanta music culture in the Source magazine. I was writing for XXL. I was a stringer for Essence. And this is something I was still doing my regular job. You know, I was doing my thing in music, but I was always a writer. And I was able to bring some attention to artists like Jazzy Faye or to like um, Marcos Peter, what was a mainstay in our community at the time. Like people, major DJs that are traveling with all types of artists used to work at Marcos. So that was just another, you know, kind of. Um, um, aspect or layer to who I was as a writer, and, I, and that's what I want to let people know that you can ex you can actually tap into all facets of who you are. You know, you can't say, well, well, I don't have time to do this, and I don't have time to do that. I found time to do it all. So if I can be a testament to you that you can, if you have this gift, you can tap into it. You can find a way to maximize your time and achieve all your goals. Um, after working in these um, with these production companies, I eventually. Um, you know, picked up corporate gigs with um, Warner Brothers and NCA Universal, which actually led, if you guys are familiar with Randy Jackson uh, from American Idol fame and Naima Lee, who I worked with at Rowdy, um, they gave me my first shot as my own production venture. I was able to get a deal with them and have my own producer sign to me. So like I said, that, that entrepreneur spirit came full circle. So I went from the candy girl to the music girl. So I taken all of my experiences, you know, I studied my skill set um, in marketing as well as my internships and having um, really been exposed to the production side of things and producer management. And I was able to land a deal with MTA Universal, then eventually land a deal with Notting Hill Music out of London, and eventually with Warner Brothers and, and at Sylvia Rollins Electra. And we had song deals, and we were getting like a lot of money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We were all very young, um, and it was just a, an amazing time, you know, but um, that kind of, op and I shared this last week, and I found myself going into a space that initially, you know, sometimes when you have uh, different places in your life, you're a little bit more apprehensive about sharing it, but when I was at the height of my career, like I said, I had worked for these labels, and I had all these great relationships, and I found myself flying back and forth between, um, Atlanta, and New York, and LA. There was um, a period in my time, it was the very first time, um, I think I had been five years into this um, working on my own in the industry, that I had, um, I guess, a moment that just changed the whole trajectory of my life. And it was something that caught me off guard. But it's like I kept having these God moments where it was like I was having these moments where I was thinking like, this is not it, you know? Even though everything around me seemed, I mean, if somebody were on the outside looking in, they were like, she's got it. You know, she knows these people, these major players in the industry. She's traveling. She's going to Paris. She's going to L.A. She's doing deals in London. She's driving a couple of cars. And I was making six-figure income. And I was a kid, really, mentally and, <laughs> and literally. But it was like I had this flight, and I'll never forget it. And I share this story a lot. I, I, not before, but recently I've shared it over the past few years because I've come to terms with how monumental that moment was for me, um, that I realized it was a greater purpose. It's a greater purpose for me. And that's what, you know, like I was talking to some folks on Periscope yesterday and I said, you know, that Mark Twain adage is something to live by. There are two monumental moments in your life. You know, the moment you were born and the next one is the moment that you realize why you were born. And though it may have looked like an amazing lifestyle, I realized that's not what I was here for. I was not here to pop the bottles and party with Puff and, you know, have all these amazing um, opportunities in music. I was here to be about the business of changing lives or being somebody who would impact masses of people based upon my own life's journey. And I know that may sound deep or whatnot, but it's the truth. I realized that just wasn't a life for me. And I had a five and a half hour flight from LA, I mean from Atlanta to LA, and it was the most tumultuous flight I've ever experienced in my life. I was emotional, I was I was just I was a wreck. By the time I landed, I know the you know the 
flight attendant was like, are you going to be okay? Do you have somebody here to pick you up? But it was because it was so much going on in my mind at the time because I was coming out there to go in the studio with all these people and had meetings with like, that, that was, you know, we're working on the LSG project. We were working on projects for um, Atlantic. We were doing so much, but I wasn't into it. It didn't mean anything to me. And I had a, a life-changing conversation with one of my clients at the time who was a songwriter and artist. And I talked to him because he and I were in the same place. We, um, he was in a group, army group that was signed to uh, MCA. I mean, they were on tour with Avon and Kiki White and all these people, all these new artists that we were trying to launch. And he could not find peace, and I could not find peace, so we became each other's kind of sounding board, confidants. And uh, we were sitting at the Lermitage Hotel in Beverly Hills, and everybody was out because it was Grammy weekend. And everybody was out. And we were sitting by that, and we were like, you know what? We can't do this anymore. You know, I'm telling him, and he's telling me. And it was a come to Jesus moment. And it was just like, I don't. I think this will be the last time, you know, that I actually am out here for a while. And the majority of my work was there. So I didn't even understand the words that were coming out of my mouth, but I knew I had to be obedient for my own sanity and for my own well-being. And we were out there for another two and a half weeks, and we were working on their project and, you know, um, doing a lot of great things quote unquote great things, but when I flew home I knew I'd be home for a while and I had um, decided that I was going to really like settle because I had been living out of suitcase for like I said almost like you know for a while and it was never settled and never had a little comfort zone um, because I was just you know popping just making it happen you know that that the hustle part was coming out of me but um, I, got, I got back home and I'm I really got um, one of the producers that um, I was managing um, and working with at Noontime, who had worked on Destiny's Child and all those other things, introduced me to um, his church. And because I was looking, I was hungry, I was thirsting for something. I needed somewhere to really just, you know, be fed and be, you know, refilled and restored. And I just, you know, I joined that church and, and I just became like a, I was just live there. <laughs> I just like, I was just there, you know. I would have people calling me about, you know, because we were in song deals. We had deliverables. We, If you know anything about music publishing, you know that once you accept advances, you've got to deliver. So, but my heart wasn't in it, you know. It's like you want to deliver because you want to get your next advance and you want to get all these royalties and things of that nature, but that was insignificant um, as it related to what was next for me and my greater call. Who was the person? <laughs> you Which one? The, name, the last person. Um, actually, um, his name is Mark Dickerson, okay. and he left the industry too. He went on to sing with, I mean, he's an amazing vocalist and songwriter, and has worked with Fantasia and all these other people, but right now, guess where he is? Who is he's planted a church in Jacksonville, Florida, oh, and he's a, yes, he's a husband, he's a father, and he's a pastor, mm -hmm. and he's been called to a congregation that's a non-traditional church on the beach oh. um, to pastor to possibly thousands of people, so out of obedience. Everything starts to make sense in my life. And I just had a conversation with him the other day, and I said, hey, do you remember that conversation? Do you remember where we were, you know, sitting in Beverly Hills and not even, you know? Yeah. Different life. Such a different life. So um, I guess I can kind of fast forward. I was in that place. Um, I mean, I had residual income coming in, and I, I, I was able to... I was saving money, and I, but I, I stopped the whole representation and working, you know, can just, like I said, I had walked away. But um, based on all of my experiences and my connections, um, the only thing next for me was to launch, relaunch. And um, I had studied, you know, public relations and marketing, and I went back to my roots. I worked um, initially out of um, school. I also worked at Ketchum and General Mills, so I had the corporate communications background. So I kind of married all of my experiences and launched my company. The initial company was 404 Management, and then I kind of realized that I was more than just management, so I launched my love consulting. And um, through that company, I've worked with, from the inception, I've worked with like Real Housewives of Atlanta, um, different, I was at the cutting edge beginning of the reality TV world. And a lot of people think, you know, it's funny how when you have your successes, people kind of attach that to you and act like that's where you started. But that was just part, that was like part three for me. <laughs> you know, I had already kind of, you know, I started early. So um, I ended up having the opportunity to work with Bad Boy again and work on Warner Brothers in, in different capacity, though. 
um, from a marketing PR perspective and was able to do a lot of brand integration um, for different um, clients and like Nene Leakes and Lisa Wu and even went on to um, find a, a niche in production. I, I did a lot of casting for those shows. I've casted um, the season that Cynthia Bailey and Phaedra Parks joined. Um, I've cast Lisa, Lisa Wu and Mariah Huck for Merit and Medicine. So um, it just kind of started to kind of, you know, I kind of started from ground zero. And, you know, that's why I think that's going to be something that's very important for us to really go deep into uh, on Saturday, reinvention. Because people kind of get stuck and they think that just because I studied this and this is where my skill set is, my expertise and what my resume looks like, I got to stay here. You know, I studied nursing, so I got a nurse. You know, I studied mechanical engineering, so I got to be an engineer. Um, I've worked in, you know, at the post office for 12 years. Why would I switch, you know? But because, because, you know, because sometimes that, 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 that light bulb goes off and purpose calls you, it pulls you, and it makes you uncomfortable. And either you answer or you're reluctant and you find yourself in a position where you, you know, you cause yourself undue stress. And uh, luckily, and I'm very grateful for the fact that I, you know, tapped back into my entrepreneurial background and I was able to um, start a striving and um, amazing and productive and profitable business. And I've been doing that ever since I made that decision. So we can get into a perfect candidate for a personal brand. Let me um, stop there with a few questions in here. And, and guys, I see some of your questions. If you want to ask your question live right now, go ahead and click on the raise your hand button. Uh, we'll stop right now before April. Because for the next probably 15 minutes, it's going to be straight lessons, okay? So if you want to ask a question right now and you want to ask it live, um, or I'll go ahead and raise your hand and I can ask the question. Or I can take a question from, um, from the chat window. So give me a second here. Let me see if anybody has their hands up. Again, um, raise your hand if you would like to ask a question live. If not, I will go ahead and type one. Uh, looks like no. What is it, join webinar? No. I'll go to a webinar. Yes, join the webinar. Join webinar.com? Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you the code. Please. All right, so um, let's see. While we do this, uh, let's see. This is from Kamaya. Hi, Kamia. Kamia, sorry, Kamia. All right, so Kamia's question is April, it oh. sounds like your opportunities and experiences can account for your exceptional business in LA. What do you say? What do you suggest to those of us who lack those things other than solid business plans? That's that's um, from Camille. Okay. Could you say that one more time? I'm sorry. No. Yeah, sure. Um, so it sounds like your opportunities and experience can account for your business intellect. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you suggest for those of us who lack those things? And I think by those things she means if they don't have the opportunities that you had and they don't have mm -hmm. the experiences that you had. Mm -hmm. um, um, did they lack those things? What do you suggest to them? Okay, um, thank you for that question, first of all, because I don't ever want to just make it seem like, you know, my life experience is so far-fetched from yours because whatever you need for your purpose, I promise you, you have experienced it, okay? So you don't lack anything. Let's start there. You have all the wherewithal, you have all the skills and all the expertise and life experiences that you need to get to purpose. So what I would suggest and something that we'll actually do also on Saturday is that whole self-assessment that I talk about all the time. Because at the end of the day, it was not probably a requirement for you um, based on what you're purposed and called to do. Because um, I want you to think right now, and I want everybody to do the same thing. You know, think about when you were born, okay? Think about the actual day, the year, the parents that you were born to, where you were born, okay? Just like I said with that whole Mark Twain adage. And then think about the fact of the matter that you were born for a different purpose than me. There's sometimes, sometimes people don't have to go through that Job experience. Sometimes people are just here to go through an experience just enough for somebody that they're going to tap into. You know, you got to think about that. So I feel like you need to assess where you are. You know what your innate gifts are. What have you, you know, what have you always been very, very good at? 
You know, what have people noticed about you? Like, oh, she's a great communicator. Oh, she's a great problem solver. Oh, she's a great peacemaker. And look at that. Put, put that stuff down on paper. Don't just think about it. Once you put it in your head, then put it on paper. I'm very analog when it comes to that because you need to look at it. You need to put pen to paper and see it in black and white. And then think about the fact of, okay, um, you may not be that old. You know, um, I'm talking about over a decade of experiences, whereas you may have only been out of school a couple years. So you can't even compare the two. It's apples to oranges. But for the past two years, what have you gone through? Has it been smooth sailing? Have you changed your major? Did you graduate and what did you graduate and what did you study? Once you studied and let's say you relocated, then what did you go through when you relocated? Where do you work right now? You know, how do people view you right now? And are you in a place of comfort where you are right now? If you're not, then I promise you that it's temporary. That's a very temporal place that you're at. Because if you're at peace, I don't care if you're supposed to be there for eight years or eight months, you have a, you just have that peace. You have the innate thing. You have to get in touch with yourself from a mind, body, spirit perspective. And are you just comfortable where you are? If you are, then really got kind of just figure out and, and have that moment with God. Like I'm very, you know, I'm a God-centered person. I'm a God-led person. So I, I, I try to say, okay, if I'm in my environment, if I was still, like if this was like, circa 1990-something, and I was still working in corporate. I would sit there, and, and this is what I would tell my 20-something-year-old self, you know, why are you here? What value do you add to this business? How is this playing a role in your purpose, in your destiny? And you got to put all that stuff down. You'll be very surprised when you start to mind map and start to take that stuff out of your head and put it on paper. You'll come to a place of like, whoa, I see why I'm here because I talk to people every day. I counsel people every day. No, it's a job that allows me to come home early enough to work on my business plan. Oh, this is a job that's really like setting me up for the next level of me. It also could be, I don't forsake any part of the process. If you're working somewhere, if you've already launched your own business, where you are today is where you're supposed to be. But it's all about you tapping into it. What is it that I'm bringing to this particular place that I'm in? Where am I at? And where do I see myself going? And what to start to evolve, you know? So don't ever compare. What I want to be is kind of like a prototype or a blueprint for you to follow. But you write your own roadmap, and you have your own purpose and your own destiny. Like I said, I was supposed to move around. I was supposed to be in all these different cities. But I know people that are right on purpose, and they, have, they may be doing mission work in Honduras for the next 10 years, but that's on purpose. But it's about really being quiet, spending that time, and starting to self-assess, you know? So that's how I would answer that question. All right, we're going to take one more, and then I'll um, let you start um, on teaching. Hey, can you guys hear me? Cassie, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. So uh, first of all, where are you calling in from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, Cassie. Hey, April. Hi. Uh -huh. Hi. Um, okay, April, my question for you, in building a brand, did you ever feel like you kind of had, when you first started out, that you kind of had to change some things up a little bit for where you're going to brand yourself so that it's more appealing and, um, you know, that kind of thing? Um, I absolutely had to change things up. When I realized my purpose, when I, like I said, when I had that um, eye-opening moment on that flight and that last trip that I really had working um, full-time in the music industry, I realized there were a lot of things that I had to do. I had to adjust how I spoke, how I behaved. I needed to come back to Atlanta and sit down somewhere. <laughs> I, did. I really needed to be nurtured. I needed to be up under my family, up under my godmother, in the church. And, um, and all of that led to a whole um, a different perspective. Like I said, um, I'll share a couple things that over that course of that, like about two years, um, of me kind of coming to a place of finding myself again and kind of transitioning. It wasn't easy. It was not easy because, like I said, I was in the position that I was able to, you know, work in a very, um, I guess, um, I was in a luxury environment for, you know, for where I was, you know, and I was very impressed with myself. So having to humble myself having to come to a place that I was not able to maintain the lifestyle that I felt that I had built over the course of time, I had to change a lot about myself. I had to change, you know, where I lived. I had to change my amount of travel. I had to kind of be convicted by what I was saying and doing. 
And all of that was I did not know. Now let me tell you that. I did not know why I was doing that at the time. I just knew it was something that I had to do. You know, and when I did that, it started to make a lot of people uncomfortable. So a lot of people, it, it made me purge people, you know, people that I had been talking to and I felt that were going to be lifetime um, connections. They started to fall off because they wanted to stay in that lifestyle. But my brand was um, was something that required me to look a, look a certain way, to speak a certain way, to learn certain things. I started going to acting classes, and I was like, okay, why am I revisiting this? But I knew that I had to get in the place of dealing with stage fright and speaking out and being that person that would be vocal in front of people. And I didn't, you know, it kind of, that's what I said. It's so funny how God does it because he doesn't show you the whole thing. It's like one step at a time. And I'm like, well, why am I doing this? You know, I need to be out here making money. But I didn't. Out of obedience, you'll be surprised by the amount of things that you'll start to, to have downloaded to you that, that will completely alter the brand that you thought you were building. Jesse? Yes, I'm here. I have a lot of um, my kids, my husband's in the background, so I had it on me. That's, that's great. Um, I had a part two of that question, and I promise that's it. But, um, April, have you also felt, you know, along your career that, okay, I'm failing at this, but other people praise you and say, no, you're doing great. Is that because you're so hard on yourself or because, I don't know, why has that ever came to you along your journey? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Self-doubt. We're our worst critics. But you know what? I even think that, I don't forsake that either. That's kind of a part of the suffering of the journey because I feel like, you know, you're going to try to... I think that puts you in the position to start to operate in excellence until whatever you start to do lines up with what you see. You can tell me that until you blew in the face. Oh, you're such an eloquent speaker. Oh, you're such a blessing to me. And I'm like, oh, I'm a mess. <laughs> you have no idea. You know, I'm over here like I'm afraid to do this and, and I'm operating in fear and I feel like, you know, uh, I'm not bringing anything. You know, I feel like, I, you know, my 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 latter days are nothing compared to my, you know, my former days, and I, I was just beating myself up, but I came to a place, and that's some, that's a place of acceptance and purpose. That is not something that happens overnight, but that's why I go back to that whole self-assessment, turning that mirror on yourself, and proclaiming to yourself that you are everything that you're supposed to be. You deserve every good thing. You deserve the best possible life ever, and you have to start believing that, you know, so it's good that people edify you. But then you have to start kind of like um, echoing them because they see you. You don't look at yourself. We don't really like to look at ourselves all the time. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you become mothers and wives and, and, you, and you start these businesses. I'm looking at my business. Or I'm trying to, you know, sow into my children and I'm trying to pour into others. No, 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 no. You've got to take at least an hour or whatever time you can get. Go get in front of that mirror. Go get in your war room and say, look, I am ahead and not the tail. I am amazing. I am worthy. I am beautiful. I have come from a mighty long way. I am all that. Oh my God, my hair is growing oh beautifully. And you have to start to edify yourself. And eventually, I promise, your thoughts start to come in alignment and you start to believe what you're saying to yourself. But trust and believe that happens to everybody. You have, you had Oprah doing it, you know, like, oh my God, I can't lose weight. Oh my God, da da da, da. To the point where she got, to the point she had to start Super Soul Sunday. She needed all kind of people coming to edify her. But eventually, that is just a part of the process. You just can't get stuck in that. You got to know that you're doing well. And you can only get better. Thank you, April. Thank, thank you thank for your you so question. Much, thank you for thank being you so on. Much. All right, guys. So again, for the next probably ten minutes or so. Okay. Um, yeah, we can have Lisa on in, in as well. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's get to this. The next set of lesson. Mm -hmm. Is that is that okay? Can Lisa say hi so we know oh, she's sure, actually sure, like sure, sure. Um, um, let me see. on and Lisa, ready to go. Let me see if I can find her. Uh, did she log in yet? Ask her if she logged in. Um, All right, guys. One of our guests from uh, this Saturday coming up is going to call in tonight, and she wants to say hi to everyone I'm in preparation. I don't see her on yet, though. Oh, she's not on? Okay. No. And I'll tell you what. I'll just keep an eye out for her. Okay. And uh, let's, let's do this next two sets. Okay. And we're going to be rocking and rolling. Yeah, I'll keep an eye. Thanks. All right. So the perfect candidate for a personal brand, which is everybody on this call. Everybody. <laughs> everybody, yes. 
Okay, like I spoke a minute ago, um, if you're uncomfortable where you are, and we hear that a lot, but I kind of want to expound on it so you know what that means. You know, if you go to this job and you, it, the job it may have been an amazing blessing to you. You're like, oh my God, I really wanted this job. But if you've been at the job, I don't care if it's one month or one year, and after lunch, and it's around 1 o'clock, you're just looking at the clock. You're looking at the clock. You're rushing to get home to, to do it, to get in traffic and to cook dinner. And what are you rushing to? You're just rushing away from something that you're not comfortable with. If you're in a relationship that's not fulfilling, I mean, the prime example of that is um, Elizabeth Gilbert's um, Eat, Pray, Love. Where she said, everybody said, um, hey, you know, this is amazing marriage that you have, and you guys are going to have children. And, but she, there's no, she had no peace with it. No matter what they said, she was trying to make it work. And she talks about that in her book and how uncomfortable she felt. She felt like the walls were closing in on her. Or if you're in a, um, a place where, you know, you, you're ready to launch, you're ready to launch, and for whatever reason you keep talking yourself out of it, you're not comfortable. But there are people, and let me, let me flip that and make you understand that. Now, there are people that are completely at peace with where they are. They are cool with it. They like it. Hey, I have a great marriage. I have great kids. I, I love my business. I love my job. Hey, this may not be for you, but you can still tune in and talk to the person in your life that it may be right for. But this is about the people that are in an uncomfortable, kind of stuck place that know that there's better out there for them. All right. Understand your purpose before thinking about a brand. Now, I'm really going to spend a... Uh, quite a bit of time on that on Saturday because people get a little bit, it's not a convoluted thoughts about what purpose is. You know, because people will say, you know, I have a, um, a session or an assessment with the client and they'll say, well, you know, um, I don't know my purpose or um, my passion and they make them synonymous. And no, passion and values and skills and expertise and all those things are tied into your purpose, but they are not your divine purpose. All of that leads you to purpose. So understanding your purpose, like I said, why are you here in the earth? What is it that you bring value to the earth for? Why were you even born? You know, whatever circumstances that you came about, be it a mistake or be it a well thought out and planned pregnancy, whatever reason that you were born, your purpose was set in the earth before you even travel down those, you know, that little canal. So we want to tap into that and talk about purpose before we talk about a brand. Because I don't want anybody to start a, um, or launch a brand based upon, I want to get this money. <laughs> that is, that it will never work. That will never work. So we want to do it right. We want to get to purpose. We want to understand why you have the skill sets you have. Why do you have the innate gift sets you have. And how they, you know, equate the purpose and the greater purpose of you in this earth. Okay? Then you gotta claim and embrace it. You can't run from it. You have to do an assessment. I mean, let, let's say that, you know, somebody like a, a Tasha Cobbs or um, or Adele or any of these vocalists, you know, oh, you know, I can sing, but I really don't know, you know, they, they may not understand that that's a part of their greater purpose. But why were you gifted? The next person wasn't. I can't, I sure can't sing like you. You know what I'm saying? So why is it that you have the gifts? And then why do you have the gift of faith? Why do you have the gift of, um, of being a giver? You've got to understand that your gifts are all tied into your purpose. So we have to turn that mirror on ourselves and take some time out and really do the work and understand that the values that you have, everybody didn't have. Some people don't have, some people are just so drawn to children. They care about children. They care about children and Africa, they care about children, and it touches them. And it, and it may not touch, they, it might have been two sisters born in the same household to the same parents, and and, and, and one of them has this, this thing about children, one of them has this thing about medicine. It's her purpose, and it's her purpose. You understand, you can't be tied up with what people's expectations of you are. You have to get to what you're here for, and you will live the best years of your life when you're operating a purpose. I promise you that. So, how do we do that? And what is an authentic self-assessment? You know what a self-assessment is? When it's authentic, it's done by you. And the only person that's allowed to tap into that is God. <laughs> that can be the only person. You cannot go out here and get opinions. You know, I think most of us have heard enough over the course of our life as to what people think we should be doing. You know, you're great, you know, um, you're a great um, negotiator. Have you thought you should go to law school? You're, you're this, you're that, and the other, you know. But what do you say about yourself? You know, what do you feel on the 
innermost part of your being. What do you feel like you're here to do? And then, like I said, we break that down. We break down values. We break down the character. We break down your life experiences. Because some people have gone through a lot. You know, you look at these stories on, on, on the news or on Dateline, and you're like, oh, my God. Had I gone through something like that, I don't know if I could have survived. But that was purpose for that particular person. So you put your life experiences, and then you put your skill set in there. Because some people have gone to medical school. Some people have gone to school for English. Some people have gone to law school. And we marry all of those, and we assess, based upon that, what we are in the position to do and how we bring value to, to the world at this point in time. Crafting a personal brand mission statement is one of the greatest things that I enjoy doing with clients. Um, and for myself, because my mission statement is always, and I do mean always, evolving. Um, so my brand mission, I like to write it out in like a paragraph style. Like, I am here to do what? I possess the skills to do what? And my mission in life is to do what? I have an amazing friend in Los Angeles who, um, she didn't even know why she moved to Los Angeles. She's from Detroit. And then she lived in Atlanta for a very long time, and she also worked in the music industry me, with me and was also one of those people that walked away from amazing opportunities and found herself in Los Angeles with her um, fiancé at the time who was a, in a major R&B group that was like a, a hit group in the, in the 90s. And she ended her relationship, even though they have a daughter together, an amazing daughter who's also tied into her mission. And she was so drawn to children. Like, she's like that case study. And um, she found herself being very involved in a mission um, in Sierra Leone. And it was before the AIDS epidemic and all that stuff was going on, but she found herself um, bringing resources because she saw a need. She just visited one time and has been back, I, I mean, countless times. And she's brought so many corporate partners in, into that particular part of the world. And do you not know that Sierra Leone, is different because of her touching down there and her answering the call for her purpose. And she crafted that mission statement. And that's something that you will put on paper and you will put it up somewhere where you can see it so you can be consistently reminded until it becomes something that's so embedded in your memory that becomes a part of your actual DNA. And you know, like, I am here to do such and such. Like, think about Susan G. Coleman's sister. Has she not accepted her mission? Has she not professed it to the world? Do you know how many people would not be in a position to even care about breast cancer? How many people would not be doing additional research? How many people would still be dying by the numbers because we don't have the funds coming to breast cancer? But she answered the call, and she said, look, this is my greater mission. Think about the people that have birthed other people out of what they do. You may not even know their name, but you see, they have brought masses to um, to the world. They birthed authors, they birthed pastors, they birthed teachers. Um, you may have one professor at the Harvard Medical School that you never know about, but you might know about the 18 doctors that went through his courses and his residency and have changed the whole trajectory of the medical industry. So you got to understand how important and how impactful your mission is, and it's not about you. It's about you answering the call, and it's about you doing the work, but it's all about what's going to come out of that mission. Uh, vision board, I insisted upon having this as part because I have, I don't know, a lot of people are skeptical and, and have whatever they have to say about vision boards, but I'm here to tell you I have done one um, traditionally for the past seven years, and when I tell you that the majority of the things have come to pass, they have come to pass down to my exact car that I drive. I put that on my vision board and didn't even pay attention to it for like almost four months. Purchased the car, didn't think about it. I had it in my closet because I'm like, okay, when I'm getting my shoes or changing, I'm going to take a glance at it and, and send all my energies to it and say, God, make it happen, and we'll go about my business. But then when I really did an assessment about in October of that same year, I realized about 80% of those things had come to pass. And guess what was on there? Hosting events like this, speaking to people, being transparent, open to people. It's something that if you told me I was going to do this 10 years ago, I would have been like, you're a liar from the pits of hell because I'm not telling people my business. <laughs> but but I knew, I mean, I would put myself, I would put little audiences or cut people up and put them on my vision board. And I would, um, even the technology of it all, even my office, you know, I would have a pink office and I would have, and I said I was going to have employees. It was just a whole lot, but it was all on that board. 
and I set out on a mission to make that happen, and it was effortless. It was, and I am a, a believer, but I'm also a believer in the universal laws. Okay, that's why you have people that are not even Christians or anything that profess any level of Christ or God that are still they're following universal laws. Those are principles. You give what you put out, you receive, and um, law of attraction is a universal law. And if you operate in law of attraction and believe, you believe as a man think it, so is he. You believe, trust that stuff will start to manifest itself. You got to stop having doubt. You got every time doubt even tries to creep, doubt got to be completely like uninvited. The doubt has have you can have no place on your workplace. You can't have doubt no anywhere near you. If, if if a person even is even a doubting um, person in your life, they need to be cut off. I'm sorry. I don't care if they're rela related by blood. Block. Because everything Look. in you, <laughs> and I know that that's my gift. You know, I've come to a place where I have done that self-assessment, and I've cried about the things where I failed, and I've cried about the things that I fall short, but I am completely embracing the things that I am, and I know that I have been gifted with the gift of faith. And I have faith, you know, and sometimes it's, it's almost like I mean, I'm talking about mustard seed faith. I'm talking about moving mountain faith. You understand? So um, that, in addition to putting those things on paper and keeping the mission before me and having my vision board, oh, my God, that's why we're sitting in my office. That's why I'm talking to you, and that's why things are manifesting in my life on a daily basis. Has, um, is Lisa on? Yes, Lisa is on. So Lisa, I am about to unmute your microphone. And uh, Lisa, if you if you click on the the green microphone button, it should be there. Um, just unmute it from your side, and we can hear you. Hello, Lisa. This is AJ. Can you hear me? Hello, AJ. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Yay. So welcome, Lisa, and thank you for joining us tonight. Oh, I'm excited. I've been listening and learning and taking notes at the same time. Well, let me tell you guys something, and I'm going to just edify her for a quick 30 seconds, and I'm going to let her share her a part of her story with you. But um, I, like I said, Lisa kind of like, we connected during that part um, where I told you I was in that, in that uh, place of, you know, understanding and trying to seek my next, you know. Mm -hmm. I was in a, a broken place. I was in a, you know, I had walked away from this amazing career. Um, I had walked, you know, I had come out of this relationship. I was, I was going through it. And the faithfulness of God is the reason this, this woman was manifested. She came into my life, seriously, like something on my vision board. <laughs> and um, we had this monumental moment. And at my lowest low, we sat in La Madeline. <laughs> yes. And she told me, she spoke into my life and told me, things that I was going to do and, you know, impact uh, people and and how, you know, everything I had gone through was not for much, that I was really, you know, um, in purpose. And when I couldn't mm -hmm. see it, she saw it for me. So I told her, you know, from this day forward, you are always going to be involved in everything I do because I know how amazing, how special she is. And I just want to thank her for being who she is to me. And I'm happy to share her with you guys tonight as she shares just a little bit of her story. Oh, thank you, April. You're so awesome. I love you. I love you. <laughs> so how did you come to terms with, um, how did you get to where you are? How did you get this on this wellness journey? Um, um, it's so cool listening to the things you're talking about because they're so on point. And the things that April is speaking of is definitely universal law. It is, because I'm sure that when you are part of this summit on Saturday, you're going to be hearing this same lace of message throughout every human being that is going to be speaking. And so it's pretty much the same way. I know it's totally God, but um, when I was seven years old, my kidneys failed, and I had to go see all these different doctors, and they told my mom that one day I would have to have a kidney transplant. And... My mom always allowed me to live my life, not as a sick child or a sick teen, but she always taught me to, you just live life while you have life. And um, I think that's what started a consciousness of wellness is there. And then when my body started to deteriorate, um, 
I really wanted to focus on how could I heal my body naturally. So I went back to school and studied out holistic nutrition and medicine and um, actually started from there. And it actually kept me going for over eight years until my kidneys com completely failed and I had to get a kidney transplant. So it all was, you know, it all started with that consciousness that my mom gave me and then it, you know, it manifested into really figuring out how can I uh, make myself well. And it put, put me on a great journey to wellness and health. Awesome. Okay. That's amazing. Um, and, you know, we connect on that, you know. Um, what would you say to people that are in a place where, let's say something is, they're having a challenge in their health or they're having a challenge in their relationship. What words can you give somebody to give them hope, to keep pushing towards purpose? I think the thing is, is a mantra that I say to myself, uh, I've said it for many, many years, and it started from when someone told me, I was at church, and this um, friend came up to me and he said, Lisa, what are you going to do if this is the way your life is going to always be? How are you going to live? How can you live being sick like this every day? What are you going to do? And you know, you hear a question like that and you're like, oh my, that's, you know, that's very discouraging and, and negative. But actually, I believe that everything served the good in my life. So I took that and I said, you know, I need to answer this question. How am I going to live my life if this is what life is going to be like? And I made a promise to myself. I said two things. I said that if I breathe today, I live today, and I will live it to the fullest. And that got me up. I got up from the inside, even though my body was breaking down on the outside. And the second thing I told myself is that I will live my dream short or long. I will live my dreams. And that also got me up on the inside. And I think it's very important to pray and meditate and, and to have positive affirmations that you say to yourself to get up on the inside, even if the outside seems like it's crumbling down. So those are things that I would say. Wow. Oh, I'm excited about Saturday. Um, <laughs> me too. Um, I guess um, I'm just going to, I mean, I don't want to, hold you on because we have a lot to touch on Saturday, but I guess one last question I would ask is, because sometimes people have a hard time understanding authenticity. Can you, in your own words, define how you live daily in your authentic self? I think, for me, personally, authenticity is living from a place of truth. And that takes prayer and meditation you have to, you cannot allow the chaos of the world to become the chaos within you because then you start to lose your authenticity. So for me, it's getting still and listening to your truth. I think that for me, that is living from a place of truth and honesty. That is authenticity and not caring about what people say or, what right. people, or the expectations that people put on you. I tell parents, this is what I say to parents, I say God has already implanted what your child needs to, to be guide them in their truth. You can't put truth on someone. It's already planted inside of them through their creation. And so I think that's authenticity. Thank you so, so much. Um, AJ? Yeah. Um, so I, I have read your bio, and I've, um, April is, is, you know, when, when we were getting this together, she told me a lot about you. But there may be someone on the call uh, who may not um, know your background. So could you give them a quick Twitter version of your background and who you are and some of the things that you're involved in now, just so that they can be acclimated with the value that you're bringing Saturday? Sure. Um, of course, I'm Lisa Washington. I am the CEO of Vitali Wellness and Beauty Company. Um, it's a natural organic um, wellness company that specializes in holistic healing, um, natural, um, natural um, skin care and nutrition. I'm also a yoga and meditation instructor. I've been doing that for almost 20 years. Um, I recently went and got certified as a lifestyle behavior coach, which I'm very happy about that because it definitely helps with um, my consultation and wellness. So that's pretty much Lisa. I'm a mom. I have a 29-year-old, a 15-year-old, and I have two grandchildren. And you're on TV right now. Oh my gosh! And yeah, television is driving me. Television is amazing. I'm actually on Food Network All Star Academy, um, cooking for fifty thousand dollars. But I'm having so much fun with the whole television stuff. Yes. <laughs> and she can cook. Okay. Yes. All right. So, all right. Well, 
I think that um, we want to allow you to um, break away at this point, but thank you Thanks, so guys. much. Thanks, guys. Are you excited about Saturday? I am so pumped. I, I'm like excited about learning. I am super excited about the stuff I get to learn on Saturday. People are going to be blown away. I mean, life changing. Yes, absolutely. All day. Well, thank you so much. And we're giving you a virtual round of applause. Uh, uh, thank you. Have a good night, you guys. Thank, thank you, you, Lisa. So we'll keep this going. Um, one thing to keep in mind to be successful. Ooh, I let me just let me make sure all eyes are looking and all ears are listening. No one owes you anything. This industry is 100% built on your hard work. Okay, write that down. Whatever you have to do because take a picture. yes, take a picture. You know because um, you have to be intentional about working towards your success. Nobody owes you anything on your job. Nobody. When you launch a business, nobody's required to to um buy to buy your stuff or to be you know your consumer. You have to work hard to earn business. You have to work hard to to build even a relationship. You have to work hard to even be a great parent. You have to put in the work to get the results. So remember that no one owes you anything. If I don't, if you don't get anything else tonight, get that because you got to work hard for this thing. Ninety nine percent of people who set out to build a brand fail. Okay, let's talk about why. Number one, chief number one, and I hear, and this is like from my own experiences, because the first thing I ask someone when they say either, I need, you know, I want to launch my brand, I need consultation, I need a publicist, but they have no realistic goals. You know, they may say, well, look, um, I was a model, I really want to really be the next level model, I would like to be on the cover of Essence. Bop, bop. <laughs> <laughs> Red flags. You have to be realistic in goal setting. You can't think that you're going to launch your business in 30 to 60 days, have no marketing budget, and think anybody's going to come and patronize you. We have to start by, once again, like I said, assessing ourselves and where we are. Be realistic about our goals. And understand that they have to be measurable. You can't just set a goal and have no way of measuring it. You know, Like, I want to do this. This from a brand, I want to do that, but you don't even know if it's working, you know. So we got to be very realistic when it comes to setting our goals. Um, next, spending too much time around the wrong people. Like I said before, purge, purge, and purge again. People don't understand that spring cleaning um, is also synonymous with doing that for humans. <laughs> Sometimes you got to dump people out of your phone. You got to block people. You have to put them on do not answer. I have people that I love. I'm talking about, like I said earlier, blood relatives, um, ex exes, um, people that, that were so close that I thought would be always a part of my life, but they are like chief naysayers. There are people that are buzzing around your ear trying to give you every excuse in the world, like, well, how are you going to leave your job now? You know, God wouldn't tell you to leave your job now and you got these kids up in it. What? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't speak to what I am supposed to do. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to self-assess and I'm going to sit down and talk about where I am when I am in the process of changing and reinventing and launching who I am. Personal brand success is all about you and honesty with yourself. These people have to stay away. You cannot, you can't afford to have anybody around you um, that's going to speak against your destiny, your purpose, and the instructions you've been given. Jumping from one thing to the next without allowing things to develop. That is a huge no-no. And I spend a lot of my time, and I think I earn a lot of my retainers and my fees with my clients keeping them focused. Like, um, you know, what about this? Now, what if we go do that? You know, you can learn a lot from athletes, you know, like a Kevin Durant or a LeBron James or even like Kobe, even though I'm not a Laker fan. But, I mean, the, the work ethic they have and the focus that they have, they're in the gym, they're in the gym, you know, they're, they're focused on their craft, they're looking at plays, you know. They have that kind of discipline and wherewithal that we all can learn from. You cannot be jack of all trades and master of them and think that you're going to have personal brand success. You have to put forth a plan. And that goes back to the goals. And we'll talk about that more in detail on Saturday, I promise you. Because you have to line things up. Just like you have a timeline. You don't, if you're at work, you, you can't go, oh, you know, I think I wanna, um, I'm going to be a teacher. 
and I think I'm going to teach the first grade, and then I'm going to run over here and show the first grade, what, skip them to the sixth grade. No, everything is a process. There's a timeline to everything, okay? And that applies, it's applicable in brand success as well. Can I give an example real quick for that? Yeah, Just please. Um, so on the jumping around from one thing to the next, uh, one of the things that you see in entrepreneurs over and over again is that a lot of times we're idea people, right? And um, a lot of times we can successfully juggle a few things, but the point in this is, and I had to learn this the hard way, um, if you think about, look at it from the perspective of like a musician, right? So if you look at Beyonce, right? She didn't start out as Beyonce. She started out as a singer, a very talented singer. And she built her brand as a singer and, you know, as a part of Destiny's Child. And then what happened is she started to, I guess, outgrow um, the brand that she created. And then that empowered her to go do other things. So now people don't dig Beyonce because she's a singer. They dig her because she's Beyonce. But she had to start out in that one very focused niche. And that same thing with Oprah, with, you know, mm -hmm. um, football, Michael Jordan, like people who outgrow the, the industry mm -hmm. and become personal brands, they typically start out in one particular thing. Mm -hmm. So when you think about what it is that you do, become very good at that thing, and then eventually you can outgrow it and you can do other things because people dig you at that point. Awesome. That's, thank you for the example because sometimes we got to see ourselves in somebody else's case study to really get it and don't realize that, you know, maybe I am doing this. You know, I'm all over the place. I, I hear people say, I'm all over the place. And literally you are. Okay. Um, please make sure that you're also um, taking screenshots so we know who's engaged. And um, also, everybody take down my email address. I want to make sure I'm giving this out to everybody. It's branding, B-R-A-N-D-I-N-G, at Ask April Love. Um, I would love to hear from you and any additional questions you may have concerning Saturday as well. So branding and Ask April Love, lock me in. All right. Feedback. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Okay, guys, so here's your chance. Again, um, we're, we're approaching the end here. Um, here's your chance to ask any questions. I'm going to open up the microphones. I'm going to pull out the chat. I'm going to open up Instagram. Um, has this been helpful? If this has been helpful, just type, yes, it has been very helpful. And then tell me how. Has this been helpful? Um, Felicia, you said yes. Um, tip, how has this been helpful to you? And also, guys, go ahead and raise your hand. Michelle says, yes, this has been very helpful. Uh, Monica says, yes. Um, like I said, go ahead and raise your hand. I want you to tell me, not only me and, and not only April, but I want you guys to share with other people on the call, right? Because I know I've been doing this for a while. Everybody is not comfortable jumping on the call speaking. So what you can do is by you sharing, by you sharing, you know, you may help someone else out, all right? So, uh, Silvana, and you know what? I said I was going to unmute your microphone a minute ago, so I'm going to give you a chance now. Um, yes. Silvana, yes. Silvana, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, where are you calling in from first? I'm calling from Tucker, Georgia. Hey, Silvana. Hi. Hi. I have that voice. All right, so... so uh, so tell us how this has been helpful for you and share it with the rest of, of the attendees on the call. Okay, um, this has been actually very helpful. Um, I was actually talking to someone uh, and just kind of telling them that I was feeling a bit stagnant uh, with things that are going on. And this call has kind of renewed my press and reminded me that just because it is or it seems stagnant doesn't mean that it will be like this always. And I have to just keep going with what I've been given, and it will come to pass. So it's definitely renewed my press. It's definitely encouraged me, and it's given me a chance to encourage others just from me being renewed in this. Awesome. Awesome. Love it, love it, love it. Great, great yes, feedback. Yes, thank All right. you. So uh, the next question, thank you again, Silvana. Uh, next question is, uh, have you learned at least one thing today? And, and go ahead and share with us uh, one thing that you have learned. And, if you put your um, hands up, I will unmute your microphone as we come to a close. And guys, hang on, because April has a very special offer coming up to everybody that stays to the end. So um, if you have learned at least one thing tonight, go ahead and type one thing that you've learned 
and then uh, raise your hand and I will unmute your microphone. Um, let's see, Marquise, Marquise, Marquisha. So Marquisha, I'm going to, wait, here we go. Uh, Daphne. Hello, Daphne, if you would un hit the green microphone button and unmute your microphone, I'll go ahead and let you uh, give your feedback. Daphne Smith. All right, I'll tell you what, we will go to Felicia Jones. Hey, Felicia, are you there? Yes, hi. My husband, Drexel, and I are here. Can you hear us? Hello. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. Great. Good evening. We are from um, Atlanta, Stone Mountain, and Tucker. So I just wanted to say hi to the last caller. Awesome. All right. All right. Yay. And yes, what, what, we, what we really enjoyed the most was the comment about living intentionally, you know, being very purposeful. And, um, that is so applicable to every area in your life. It's just, you know, it's just it's such great, great uh, information and, and such a refresher uh, to us. So that was really, really, you know, incredible to just hear that again. And uh, we really did enjoy uh, the, the webinar this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Felicia. All right, and um, next question. So. If you're on the call and you've already expressed that you have a business idea, you have a brand idea, uh, if you're to the next level, tell us. I'm going to unmute your microphone. Number one, yes, that you're ready. And then number two, um, what the next level looks like for you. So I'm going to unmute the microphone for this one. Let's see who we have here. Camilla. Camilla, let's see. What does the next level look like? Uh, can be a small. Uh, um, all right. Hey, Camille, are you there? I, yeah, I didn't have my hand raised. No, oh, you didn't. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, it says. No, and that that last comment that I put was actually for the last question, not this oh, one. So. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, let me see. Any hands raised? Okay, we have. Uh, Yes, my next level looks like radio syndication. That is Cassie Simmons. I heard that. Okay, Cassie. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? What does your next level look like? If you don't want to, if you don't want to say it, just type it in the chat window. What does the next level look like for you? Mine looks like Oprah. I know that's <laughs> Mine looks like I will be producing um, Def Jam University online. Yes. <laughs> For Russell Simmons, and we're going to be teaching okay, classes. Okay, I'm going worldwide. to. Well, we're going to come in agreement on this. There you go. All right, so Sylvana says personal training, motivational speaking around the world. Uh, Cass Cassie says, yes, hunty. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't know what that meant. My wife had to explain that. Oh, yes, my hunty. gosh. All right, um, okay, well, um, Keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. We're getting ready to wrap this thing up. Yes, thanks for hanging in there with us. Um, so I guess what we, you know, we can all come to terms with the fact that it all starts with the right state of mind. And if that's going to be a mindset change, then so be it. That's just what it'll have to be. And I want to reiterate the Proverbs 23 and 7. For as he or she thinketh in his or her heart, so is he or she. And you have to believe that. So it has to first come to terms in your mind and then an agreement in your heart. And that thing will manifest itself. Take an action. action. Take an action. You'll execute. You'll execute because you believe, mm -hmm. you know. Now, why did I create this training? Um, I created this training because it was the next level of me, and it made all the sense in the world because I find myself on a regular basis empowering the people around me, and people have brought that to my attention before I even realized that's what I was doing because it was just me. It was just who I was. I want to see people do well. I want to see people win. I see things in people that are laying dormant, and I want to just come and shake them, you know, and say, hey, do you know who you are? Do you know what you're capable of? And sometimes it takes that, you know. It takes you really coming to terms with the fact of let me go into my secret place and really come to terms with the fact that I'm an amazing person, and there are hundreds of people waiting on me to step up and accept my call. I love meeting new people from different walks of life. Like I told you, um, being a student at FAMU and, and opening myself up to cultures in Atlanta and New York, I was I just loved it. I was a public relations person before I was a public relations person. Even though I'm, I, I call myself um, 
a social introvert because I do enjoy my time alone as well. I do love tapping into people and learning from other people, especially people that are doing well because I feel like I am does sharpen iron. Um, I want to help people find success faster than I did. You know, I want to um, basically be that person where you can say, well, hey, you know, um, I'm willing to show you, you know, the, the long road that I took so it can be a little bit shorter for you. Um, I wouldn't, you know, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be um, the roadmap to getting to where you're supposed to be because people are waiting on you. Like I said, our personal brand success is not about us. It's about what we are in line to do. And we have people waiting on us, so it's time to get to it. Um. All right, so um, guys, this is the last question I have for you guys tonight. So what is one thing that you learned tonight? One thing, just type it in the chat window, or I can unmute your microphone. What is one thing that you learned tonight that you can go right away and you can implement it in your business? Just type it in the chat window, the one thing that you learned tonight that you're like, you know what, that was it for me. I'm going to do this tomorrow. Just go ahead right now, and I will read it. So Savannah says she's going to claim and embrace her purpose. Yay. Um, Tawanda said intention. Yes. Tawanda Richard. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Working on the mission. Sam Gentry. Uh, we haven't heard anything from a guy tonight. Is that a, is it okay if I unmute one guy? So yeah, I would love to. Hey hear from Sam, um, I'm gonna unmute your microphone. Uh, live intentionally, Charlene. Joni Porti. Um, her chat doesn't work. Okay. Uh, hey Sam, uh, I have unmuted your microphone. If you could hit the green mute button on your side, I just want to hear from one of the fellas tonight. Let's see. Sam. Uh, focus on the focus. So, so, Salather Collins. Salather. Salather says focus on purpose. Uh, let's see. Scotty. Scotty Dietrich. Are you there? Create. Oh, she created her vision statement while on the train. Yes, that's, that's what I'm talking about. And she's calling from Dominican Republic. Oh Thank my gosh, that's yeah. awesome. Um, that's all right. So it looks like the guys aren't. Uh, let, let's see if I can find one more guy. <laughs> They They're not raising their hands. They're like, uh, um, let's see if Amal Parker, Amal Parker, are you born? Yes, I'm here. There we go. We got a brother in the house. Um, so what is one thing that you learned tonight um, that you're going to um, implement in your business? So first of all, before you, um, where are you calling in from? I'm in Morrow, Georgia. Morrow, Georgia. Cool. And what is your business or business idea? Well, I've been doing videography for probably, wow, uh, Seven eight years. I'm actually a I'm, um, a film grad, I'm trying to launch my career in terms of uh, filmmaking and everything. But um, one thing I did hear that's uh, very clear, and that's the word intentional, and being intentional in my approach, and not giving up on my goals. So I know my destiny is on the horizon. I'm right there. Mm -hmm. I have many friends that tell me how talented I am. And when you can't see it when you're going through the grind, when you're struggling, it's hard to see that. But listening to tonight and listening to you, um, Ms. Love, I really appreciate everything that you said. And I know that I'm on the right track. And I'm going to change my way of thinking and continue to do the things that I'm doing because I know it's I'm right there. I'm one one opportunity away. So I really appreciate everything yeah. that you said tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Amal, real quick, what is your website? Do you have a website? Uh, actually, it's not completed. Um, I am on um, uh, Wix, but you can find me on um, YouTube. Um, last name is Parker. Um, Amal, A-H-M-A-L, last name is Parker. I'm on YouTube. I'm actually in production on a web series, so I know after listening to tonight, I'm on the right path. It's just a matter of just keep grinding, keep continuing. To uh, to do the things that God is putting in inside of me and uh, get those out to the masses. Oh. There you go. Oh, you just blessed hey, me. You what, just what, blessed me. What is your Instagram, Amal? Yeah, what is it? Uh, Amal Parker is all together. A H M A L Parker. P R K E R. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Amal. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. Cool. So I just typed it in the chat window, guys. Everybody go on Instagram right now and follow Amal Parker, A-H-M-A-L Parker. I want you to encourage the brother. You know, again, everybody starts 
sometimes you're, Amal, like you said, sometimes you can be three feet from gold. I'm sure everybody's seen that graphic where the guy's digging and digging and he gives up and turns around when he's right there on the verge. I just want to encourage everybody on the call, just keep trudging forward. Right. Real quick testimony, 10 seconds. I did my first webinar to the urban market a couple uh, in 2014. I had four people on my first call. <laughs> right, wow. Four people. And it took me um, probably 14 hours to get everything set up. So yeah. 14 hours to get it together. Four people showed up. But you know what? What I said is, man, if there were four people tonight, mm -hmm. wait until the next time I do it. Now, I could have said, man, there were only four people out of all the people that follow me and, and on and on, but I chose to look at it a different way, right? So no matter what you're up against right now, choose to look at it through the lens of, hey, there's better ahead, right? Mm -hmm. Look how far you've come, and then look how much further there is to go ahead and just keep trudging, trudging forward, all right? Sorry about that. I'm a little soapbox. Amal, again, we appreciate you, brother. Thank right, April, you. Keep on pushing. All right. All right, guys, so here's what we've all been waiting for. Tonight is the last night um, for um, the registration via the, the training. Um, what April and I, this is the culmination of everything we've been doing for the last eight, eight or nine weeks. Um, a brand new you. It's a one-day digital summit. Um, again, April's going to cover April and her celebrity guest instructors. They're going to cover the six primary pillar, pillars of branding. Um, she has free bonuses. We have handouts. Uh, also, like, like we said earlier, five guest celebrities instructors. And then, you know, like Lisa was on tonight, a wealth of information. So not only are you going to get those instructors and April, but you also get a Q&A session with each one of those. And, and that sometimes is what sets trainings apart, right? So you have your business, and you can ask very specific, actionable things that you want to learn from people who have already been there. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, uh, and let, let's let's go ahead and go through it. All right. So uh, week one. I mean, I'm sorry. Week one. Workshop number one. It's the first workshop of the day. Yes, I will be sharing first. Um, I'll be your morning presenter, and I'm so excited. Um, I have curated some information for you that I think is going to be life changing, and um, it's stuff that I've actually implemented in my own own life, my own career, and with my clients, and I know it works. So we get to the defining of what a personal brand is and why it's so important for you um, to be in the position to outshine all competition. You won't even see competition because you'll have so much tunnel vision and focus once you're really um, clear about what personal brand is and what you are as a personal brand. The goal for your personal branding, because it's all about vision and purpose, it's not about you. Personal branding is for the masses. It's about getting you to a place that you can be used in the earth. You were born for this, right? How to craft your personal branding. How to put it on paper. How to put it into a plan. You're like your own business plan. So we got some real action items because it won't just to be about your fluff. We want you to be able to have practical steps to really make this stuff happen and change your life forever. And vision is a vital step of branding. Clarity and vision. I don't want anybody else to ever say I'm confused about who I am as a brand. So that's the kind of things that I'll tap into, but I'll be flowing throughout the day with my guests, and so let's get into them. Um, as you had an opportunity to meet um, my love, Lisa Washington, and she's an amazing chef, health and wellness guru, yoga instructor, I mean, energy healing. She has gotten that training. It's not um, something that's easy to, to really um, encapsulate when you, uh, unless you really know what you're doing. She's been doing this for 20 years, so she's going to tell us how to cultivate a care mindset for people. Um, your purpose may be so interlocked with other people that you got to care about people. you got to know what you're doing this, what are your purpose for, and, and who is this target audience that you're tapping into, and what do you have for them? How to live authentically every day, and she spoke about that a little bit already, but we'll expound more on Saturday. Finding your why, and um, in her, in her personal story of triumph over adversity really revealed her why to her. And she will share more about her story. Um, she shared with you that she was a kidney transplant, but it's more to that story. And um, she was a single mom, and she has come into a place that her ladder is definitely greater. She has a beautiful life, a beautiful family. Um, I tell her when I come to her house, I feel like it's a bed and breakfast is so warm and inviting. But that comes from a person being in the right place and being in comfort with who they are and walking in purpose. And then setting a unique standard of excellence, because no matter what, when we start to operate in purpose, we want to do it in excellence, because that's how you change the world, okay? 
Then um, my amazing good friend and colleague, Satchel Jester, who holds two positions in um, Lifestyle. He's an editor at Upscale Magazine and Uptown Magazine. And he's going to talk to you about our professional purpose and getting people to buy in because who cares that you have accepted this call and, and you're walking in this personal brand and you feel successful but nobody else believes you. It's not translating and you don't look like the success that you know that you are. So we'll talk it. We'll talk about that. We'll be talking about putting yourself in a position to win. Um, do you know that strategic position yourself for opportunities? Had I not set out to um, to meet the people and the caliber of people I met early on, I would have delayed a lot of the things as it relates to um, building my career and um, moving my journey along and experiencing everything I had to. I want to put myself in a position to work for intentionally the people that I worked with early in my career because that was about positioning. Rebranding throughout life, um, it's never too late to start over. I don't care if you're 27, 47, or 67. If you still got breath in your body, you can rebrand. You know, I know some people that have lived so long and, and um, have worked in a corporate job and, and then launched a career and then launched another one. I mean, that's what life is about. You live it. You, your purpose may change from when you were 25 to when you're 45, so you got to be ready for that reinvention to happen at any point in your life. And then we'll close out um, Satchel with the perfect pitch. She hears pitches every day from different people who want coverage in these media publications, and that can be very um, realistic when it comes to your life, too. You've got to understand that you should have elevator pitch. There's no reason that if you are living a personal brand success that in less than 60 seconds you can't tell me who you are. You know, there should be no stuttering. You, you have been yourself your entire life. So we want to help you clearly share your vision with people and especially with people that matter. Um, then we have, whoa, bonus instructor, Derek Blanks. I have worked with this amazing um, brand since... Um, the inception of his career, <laughs> and he's gone on. Um, I actually am the one who coined him the celebrity photographer, then everybody just took that celebrity and ran with it, celebrity everything. But um, he was definitely the celebrity photographer um, before there were any others. And um, we're going to talk about the importance of your image. You'd be surprised how many people are launching businesses or in corporate or executives, college graduates, they don't even have a decent headshot. Um, you know, don't have a you know a great looking um, image across digital platforms, and not mindful of how much that is important. You know, um, know the image you want to project too. Don't let somebody tell you. You know, I'm going to share um, a couple stories about that from working in the industry. While well, we've had like um, I tell the story about Monica all the time. How when she was starting out. You know, she was a kid, and they kind of wanted to get her, her voice was never childish. She was like a Fantasia. She had one of those adult voices, but she was a child. So they wanted to find a happy medium, and they, they made her hair blonde, like Tion from TLC, and it was just a, a mess. But you have to know which image you can sell. If you can, you know, if, if that's, this is what I'm going to give. I'm going to be this urban chic, hippie chick, whatever it is, we're going to talk about that and get you to a place that you're comfortable in presenting yourself and your brand. Um, and we'll get into the look, the image, the basics, the whole nine. So be ready for that. Um, I would suggest having some tear sheets and some pictures in front of you so you can have some points of references for yourself. What's a tear sheet? Oh, a tear sheet is like, okay, um, I make this um, an assignment for people that I'm working in branding programs with. And I say, go and pull tear sheets of who you think you are. You know, okay. not what you, you may not be able to afford whatever you're pulling. You may not have any of this in your closet, but... Once we go through the process of like tapping into what your brand is and we have the top points and who your target audience is, what are they going to respond to? Go grab some magazines and start pulling the you know, tear sheets out, just tearing pages out of the magazine. It's like a little vision board for yourself. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is, like a mood board. Yeah. And you look at it and you say, and it gives you something to aspire to, it. and it gives you something for inspiration when you are pulling your pieces together. See, I'm learning right now, guys. <laughs> Yes. Okay. And then we have an amazing um, Tahira Joy Wright. Tahira has got so much to share. I spoke with her earlier today, and she was just, I mean, her cup was running over. <laughs> she had so much stuff to share. Um, she's going to be talking about being mindful and reiterating what I said about the brand is not just about you. It's about others, and it's about your target audience. It's about the need that you need to meet with other people and about reintroducing herself. You know, she was a um, publicist. She started her her career, um, um, and I know her from being a counterpart and a colleague um, in PR, and she's launched this amazing digital platform called The Cut Life, and she basically reinvented herself. So she has people that are looking to her as a beauty expert, as a correspondent, and um, I mean, it's just taken off. 
like faster than she would have ever imagined, I'm sure. And we're going to talk about the strategic aspect of that, like creating a strategy specifically for you and how to make that thing work up from a work-life balance kind of perspective. Sometimes life happens, and we need to be in a place that we can service our personal home life, our business life, our dreams, and all of that. So we'll talk about an aerial view of our personal brand strategy. And please, guys, I, I, thank, I see a lot of people are still on, and I really appreciate you hanging in there with us. And if you could still hit us up on um, social media, mm -hmm. screenshotting, and make sure you hashtag in a brand new you, and please at me at Ask April Love. I would greatly appreciate it. We're almost done. And then, oh, and then bring it all home, um, Chantel Norman. I, I really wanted her as a true case study because um, she has a brick and mortar location. Uh, for her salon. She's booked all the way until May, I believe, um, but she's done this organically. She is approaching 100K on social media. She's overbooked. She's, all of her chairs are full, but she took a business from ideation to execution, and she is a huge success. And I want people to be able to identify with what she did and see how they can do the same thing, how to launch from scratch. So those are my experts, and I think I am like overwhelmed and overjoyed the fact that all of these amazing people are taking the time out on Saturday to um, give of themselves and their life experiences, which are priceless. Um, and you're going to learn amazing things. And I think we've covered the gamut from image to like your inner work to success and social media and all the aspects that make a brand truly successful. So uh, before we go on, is there... Any questions, any questions that, that you guys have on what's going to be covered? Um, and this is this Saturday, uh, March 5th. Um, it will be recorded, so if, you, if you're not available all day, that is A-OK. -okay. However, you can access it via your iPad, uh, via either you know Android or iPhone. Um, you can, uh, of course, go on your laptop, and it will be recorded. So it's, you don't have to be available all day. That would be awesome because you don't want to miss anybody, especially the live Q&A sessions. But it will be recorded, and you will have access to those recordings within 48 hours. So by Monday morning, you will have all the recordings and the MP3s. Yeah. Um, so um, again, we've been working on this. I'm really excited about the six, the five bonus instructors plus April. Um, six workshops uh, from 10 o'clock in the morning to 4:45, I believe. Five instructors. Um, again, we looked at the value of the course, roughly about $400 and regular price, um, $200. Um, but if we, again, tonight we're giving another um, bonus um, price mm -hmm. for everybody on the call. And that price is $49. Woo, <laughs> $49. You can go right now um, to uh, buy now. Um, dot a brand new you course dot com right. until midnight tonight. Um, you'll get the full day summit. And think about this, guys. I've been to summit. Um, if you've ever been to a seminar, just type yes. I've been to a seminar in the chat window. Um, the the dollar value that April has provided for this seminar is a steal. Um, I can't take my wife <laughs> to the movies and out to eat for fifty dollars. That is almost unheard of. So you get, not only do you get all April's wisdom, but you get all of the people that she has brought on as special guests. You get all their wisdom. You get Q&A sessions. You get a step-by-step -step roadmap of, you know, avoid the mistakes that they've made. Um, you know, they're going to help you. But like she said earlier, she doesn't want you to start from ground zero. She wants to mm -hmm. give you all the information that, that she learned. And I have a quote. Um, a single conversation with a wise man is better than 10 years of study. So think about that. Um, I spent you know, years in college at Southern University, but the real hands-on stuff didn't happen until I was into my career, right? So you know, the things that you, the places you want to go, April has been there. Uh, the guests that she's had, they've been there. Um, and they're willing to spend an entire day with you for 50 bucks, okay. less than 50 bucks, yeah. right? So, again, I, I just think that if you're ready to take your brand to the next level, um, just go ahead right over right now to buynow.abrandnewucourse.com uh, and, and check it out. Now, if you think it's, it's worth the, if you think it's worth it, just type, it's worth it in the chat window. I just want everybody that thinks that this training is worth it. And then, 
if you're not going to be able to make it or you decide that you, you know it's not for you right now just type in the chat window and tell us you know what your what your what the hold up is what we can add you know if there's some situation you have just type it in the chat window um and i can see it let's see i have acting rehearsal other than that i'd be there well cassie again it is recorded so you will get all the recordings um totally worth it amaris i will not have computer access due to the conflict i'll be traveling yes uh, cassandra it is available for download uh, if you're not if you're not in front of your computer however you can access it via your um, your mobile device. So this is 100% available uh, via mobile. So you can have the course there as well. Um, I see definitely worth it from Cassandra. Sam, Dr Sam Gentry says, it is definitely worth it. Felicia says, heck yeah, it's worth it. Um, Yolanda says it's worth it. Charlene says it's worth it. Uh, Camilla, I think that's how you pronounce it. I, mm -hmm. I did it wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Camilla said it's worth it. Um, Jace, Jay Lawson, definitely, definitely. Immediate, okay, so it will be available um, Monday. So, or actually, you know what? Um, so here, here's what we can do. We can give you the raw files if you want it immediately. We can give you the raw files within an hour of the last recording. Um, wow, but we awesome. can go, we can go in and we can edit it. Um, and the editing will take until Monday. So if you're okay with getting the raw files, and that's you know we're we're gonna chop it up into six different files because it's six different modules. But if you're okay with getting the the raw file, then I will get you that immediately um, an hour after the after the training, uh, Felicia. Uh, Vonda uh, Salater Salater is that how you pronounce it? Salater Salater. She said it's worth it. She's very excited. Savannah says absolutely worth it. Uh, Marquisa says she just got it. She's in. Thank, Thank you, you very much. so much. Um, let's see. Vonda has another engagement. Again, it is available for download, uh, Vonda. Um, let's see. Cassandra Henry. Cassandra said it is definitely working. She says, wow, this is perfect. Um, and everybody who's joining, I just want to thank you guys for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Yes, and, do. And, and do this with us. Um, share this on social media. Like, tell your friends, like, hey, if you're building a brand, you might want to drop this 50 bucks. Let's think about it. How much money do you spend if you go take a, a continuing education class over at Georgia State? Right. Or Georgia Tech. And that's yeah. just one, one class. class right? yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's no hands-on, that's all theory. You're getting you're getting knowledge directly from, you know, someone who's been there and been successful. Like April says she's driven multiple cars, huh? Yes. Yeah, she had the life. That that's that life, right? Hey. So, no, I mean, she has, the, you know, yeah, exactly, yeah. She, yeah. She has the no, lights, yeah, for right? sure. Yeah. So, you know, she chose to walk away from the glitz and glam to do her own thing. So, right. again, I'm going to be learning. So, it's definitely worth it for me. <laughs> That's my 50 bucks in. Um, but again, guys, <laughs> thank you guys so much. And uh, right now, we still have a few more minutes. And Cassandra, she's purchased. Uh, let's see. We'll I have to wait. Uh, messages and reflexology on the salon on Saturday. Okay, cool. Um. And again, um, here's what some other people did. Some people had watch parties. I've seen that. Oh, before, that'd be awesome. Right? So, yeah. again, if you own a salon or whatever, we would like to encourage everybody in the salon to get one, but just have a watch party, right? <laughs> right. Um, so, any other questions? Um, April is is here for the next few minutes. Um, mm -hmm. We have about a little bit over an hour where you can still get it for uh, the 49 bucks. So, any other questions, guys? Any questions? Anybody want to say thank you live in person? Looks like Vonda has her hand up. Uh, hey, Vonda, uh, you there? No, I actually didn't have my hand up. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, hi, though. Well, hi, Vonda. It was great. Uh, yeah, everything was great. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay. Um, let me put everybody's hand down. That could have been from a while ago. All right, guys, if you do have a question, go ahead and hit the hand up button. Or if you just want to type, let's see. Any feedback, any closing words? Sam Gentry says, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and again, I just want everybody to know, like, just be encouraged, like, no matter where you are right now, every people, you know, you have to start from somewhere, right? right exactly. So don't let, you know, your current situation um, stop you from, from pushing forward. All right, exactly. let's see. Um, Monica says, you are a blessing. Thank you. Um, Yolanda says, how do we get to... Yolanda, I will. I am going to, or my assistant is going to email the downloads to everybody who, everybody who purchases the class. Um, Jade, 
Jade says, thanks, April, Lisa, and April. Hi, Jade. Um, I enjoyed you guys, and I really learned a lot. Awesome. Uh, Savannah says, it's an honor to know you, April. Excited about what's to come for you. Oh, thank you. Um, let's see. Monica Patton, you're a, bless you're a blessing. Enjoy. Um, any other feedback, guys? We're going to go ahead and, and wrap, put a bow on it. Um, I do want to so, say one thing. Go right ahead. Um, I want to make sure everybody is looking on social, following me on um, Instagram at AskAprilLove.com. I'm sorry, not .com. That's my website. But at AskAprilLove. And we will make some announcements tomorrow. We have some special things in stores well over the next few days before the summit. But make sure you're following and checking um, for some posts that we'll be posting tomorrow about some opportunities to be a part of the class um, in addition to um, what we're doing tonight. Okay. Okay, so make sure you're following me on social, and it's Ask April Love on Instagram and Twitter, and um, Ask April Love on Facebook. And then I also want to make sure that I give out my email address again because I would love to hear from you guys. I'm still following up from last week, so if anybody's on and I have not followed up from our um, a previous email, I promise you I'm getting to all of them. And it's branding b r a n d i n g at askaprillove.com. And I want you, especially the people that are in the position to launch and are you know, facing some obstacles or having some um, hiccups along the way, I'm going to be doing a couple consultations. And this is something that's even new to, um, I don't think I shared this with AJ, but I'm very inspired by what I'm hearing. And I understand that it, you know, starting and maintaining um, in this journey called life and processing all of that in order to actually be a real personal brand success, sometimes you need a, you know, a little help along the way. So I'm definitely open to um, opening up some consultations for a couple people just to talk you through some of the, you know, the different things that you are facing um, as it relates to launching or staying um, in that place of being unstuck. So I definitely want to hear from you and just email me and let me know, you know, whatever challenges or, you know, any kind of questions that you have post-call over the next few days. And um, we'll be in touch. Um, Charlene and um, Sierra in my office may be reaching out or myself. And we definitely want to stay in communication with you and, and see you win. Okay? All right. Thanks go. so uh, much. So um, uh, Cassie says that is what she needs. April, what is your Facebook like page? That's, we want you to go like Yes, go like, um, it's Ask April Love, and it's April, and I have an April Love page. So it's Ask April Love, A-S-K, and April Love. Got it. So it's Facebook.com slash Ask April Love, and then Facebook.com slash April, April Love. Love. Mm -hmm. Let's see, um, I, here's the last, I, I even have a venue to do things for my radio show, but I need help. Yes, hunty. This is Cassie. I know with the hunty, it was a dead giveaway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Got it. All right, guys. So uh, again, um, we have five more minutes. We're gonna, if, if we have any more questions, like my grandmother would say, if all hearts and minds are clear. Right. <laughs> that's when you grew up in a church. Okay, big time. Um, we will go ahead and shut it down. Thank you guys so much. Again, just go over to buynow.abrandnewyoucourse.com if you haven't already. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you on Saturday. And again, Yay. share this. And everybody that buys, we're going to go ahead and send you the flyer so that you can post it via social media for mm -hmm. Saturday. Right. So just help us. You know, we want to help as many people as possible. Um, let's see. Cassie says she wants to pay for consult if you want. So, okay. all right, guys. Thank well, you. Email me. Email me, Email guys. branding at askaprillove.com. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so thank very you. much. Thank um, you. We hope you enjoyed this as much as we did. April, closing words. Um, I just want to reiterate the fact that, you know, invest in yourself. Um, you have this life and it's purposed and it needs to be all that it can possibly be exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. And I thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey. And I hope to see you or hear from you and see you check in on Saturday and stay in touch. Be blessed.